keeping in mind the benefit of students and welfare of the astrological world i have decided to do a new course it goes by the name of mastering the predictions now the name is self clarification right mastering the predictions the student in this course will learn how to make predictions like a master that is what the mastering series is master as in someone who have practiced the subject for quite some time who understand the nuances of subjects and working of the subject is what we are going to deal with in this course mastering the predictions and the special point is i talked about it in my video on the introduction about courses that mastering series courses are the one which i recommend to every person that if you want to take your astrological practice to greater heights mastering series courses you should do if you want to start learning with me mastering series courses you should do so it is very beginner friendly also i say you that mars is in the third house it is expecting uh saturn in the sixth house and you are able to locate what is third house mars is in the third house which rashi it is in it is influencing uh saturn by fourth aspect mars have a fourth aspect if you can understand this language you can come to the course it is so beginner friendly right so it is pure beginner friendly and second point is mastering the predictions is a course in mastering series but any course that i do be it level 2 of any course or a new course despite the fact that they may share the same title because they are two different courses they can be taken separately so even if you don't have any other course from mastering the series it does not matter you can come to mastering the predictions you can start with mastering the predictions and take other courses later on that's not an issue and this is a live course which i am going to start from 19th of april 2024 classes will be held once a week every friday 8 pm indian time onwards classes generally go for 2 to 2 and a half hours it is a 10 class course so 10 weeks it will take and because every class is 2 to 2 and a half hours so the course content will be somewhere around 20 to 25 hours of teaching i will be doing i am also making an exclusive pdf typing it myself which i will be referring in the class which will help you in studying the course content and grasping it in a better way right so the pdf is there in the course which will be shown to the participants and you can note it down right it is a 10 class course some 20 25 hours of teachings will be there in the course and it is purely beginner friendly course it's mastering the predictions the purpose is to make students able to predict like a professional predict like a master someone who have gained mastery in horoscope analysis the student will go to that level after learning the course i am going to teach things in a very structured manner step by step in such a way that students understand and memorize the principle as they are learning in the class itself so they can directly apply it after the class of course revision will be needed but it will be taught in such a simple way that it is understood then and there the speciality of the course because any course that i formalize any course that i make i want to make it wholesome so the purpose of the course starts with horoscope analysis the student should be able to analyze the horoscope now almost every course of mine talks about horoscope analysis what is the speciality in this course the speciality of the course is the inclusion of lagu parashri and madhya parashri talking about the importance of lagu parashri in the scholarly circles in the real scholarly circles of traditional astrology you say scholarly circles of banaras or scholarly circles of andhra or scholarly circles of tamil if one have not mastered lagu parashri they will not be considered an able authority to speak on astrology at all lagu parashri is so important lagu parashri talks about dasha principles but the same principles can be used for horoscope analysis also so this lagu parashri i am covering and because i am covering i will be teaching you lagu parashri shloka by shloka with my own translation my own interpretation 
and according to my own understanding the real purport of the shloka the real meaning of the shloka and research is based on that shloka my own research is based on that shloka that i will be teaching lagu parashri and apart from that there is another class is by the name of madhya parashri that also i will be covering so madhya parashri again deals with the principles of horoscope analysis now whereas lagu parashri is more concerned with dealing with horoscopes of dealing with principles of horoscope analysis with respect to how to analyze the dasha and time events with respect to dasha madhya parashri goes into general analysis also and analyzing the horoscope with respect to dasha predictions as well so this madhya parashri is also included and once again with my own translation of shlokas my own understanding of shlokas and my own interpretation of shlokas and my own researches on the shlokas of madhya parashri and lagu parashri will be the prime focus of the course so by learning lagu parashri and madhya parashri two things will be there that first of all a student will be able to make very good predictions confident predictions right because the principles in all of the courses principles are clearly laid out right so it's not like like i am giving you many principles and telling you that apply all of them and find the results that's not the thing whenever i am teaching you a principle i am clearly telling you that in this particular case this principle should be applied in this particular case this principle should not be applied this is the purpose for which the principle should be applied and for other purposes it should not be applied right so a clear demarcation of how the principle is to be applied and how the principle works is given in each and every of the course and in mastering series courses it is given even more broadly even more prominently that's make that makes the course very very useful for everyone and because see the process of reading a horoscope is first of all you analyze the horoscope and you find what is promised in the horoscope after that you time events when the result is supposed to happen now for timing of events vimshotri dasha is very widely used nowadays now if you have learned from me seen my previous videos people believe that vimshotri dasha is the prime dasha for kali yuga right it is told by sages that humans have maximum longevity of 120 years and because vimshotri dasha also runs for 120 years it is a very popular dasha it is a very important dasha it is the most preferred dasha this is what people think and this is not without any reason but what is happening nowadays that people are using plain vimshotri calculate from the nakshatra of moon which is wrong vimshotri dasha have many variations eight classical variations are there but in this course if you have seen the poster i am going to teach more than eight variations of vimshotri dasha so eight classical variations are there and few variations i have found from my own research that i am going to teach in this particular course as well right so you will learn about how to read a horoscope read a horoscope as in find whether the person will get married whether the marriage will be good or not whether the person have raj yoga the person have dhan yoga or not what level of success one can achieve what is the profession that is indicated and all of that this will be taught in the course and apart from that the shas will also be taught so that the person is able to time events and that to time events with confidence because see what happens with if you apply only vimshotri for predicting results or timing uh, timing events through horoscope does it not work it works i cannot say that it does not work but if you read everything on how to apply vimshotri dasha to get results or predict events you will get a lot of results now one can memorize these results and when it comes to seeing past things you know when it comes to analyzing past things why this have happened to the person at this point of time it becomes very easy because you know one principle is applicable there and you explain the event based on that particular principle this is an easy task but when it comes to future prediction because many principles are there and it is not possible to apply all the principles first point if you apply many principles it will give you contradictory results so future prediction becomes difficult if you use all the principles of vimshotri dasha and because the student is not guided regarding which principle is to used for what purpose the student remain confused and though they can explain the past events 
in their own horoscope or in the horoscope of others, they cannot predict future events. This problem is there. So my purpose of using dashas other than Vimshotri and variations of Vimshotri, dashas other than Vimshotri, we have talked about in Dasha Bed course. Variations of Vimshotri, we will talk in this course. You can go by either approach, whatever seems suitable to you. So with variations of Vimshotri, what happens that there are four or five rules which are not contradictory to each other. When which rule should be applied? What is the extension of the application of rule? What type of results to be expected from rule? This is clearly laid out. So not only past event can be found out, not even not only the justification for why something has happened in the past can be given, but what is going to happen in future can also be told with confidence because the rules are very few. The application is clearly taught. Right. This is the speciality because if you want to use only Vimshottari, then it will become quite problematic. Right. For an example, I will tell you something like in the variations of Vimshottari, I told you that eight variations are there. Now in this eight variations, the first thing is that Vimshottari Dasha can be calculated from the Nakshatra of Ascendant, Nakshatra that is falling in the Ascendant. And Vimshotri Dasha can be calculated from the nakshatra where the moon is falling, where the moon is sitting. Or Vimshotri Dasha can be calculated from the nakshatra in which the name of the native is falling. For example, if the name of the native starts from the letter M, it falls in Leo Rashi, Maga nakshatra. So for a person named from the letter M, the Dasha should be started from Magha nakshatra because it is Vimshotri Dasha the first dasha will be of Ketu. Now these three things are there. These three things are classically told, but when to apply it? When to do the dasha calculation from ascendant nakshatra? When to do the dasha calculation from moon nakshatra? When to do the dasha calculation from name nakshatra? This is not clear. So like 80-90% of the people don't know that these variations are also there and those who know, they don't clearly know when to apply what. That will be very clearly taught. The application will also be very clearly taught. For example, there is one more variation that Vimshotri Dasha can also be started from the nakshatra occupied by moon at the time of query. Now, this is something very important. Nakshatra occupied by moon at the time of query is the what? Now let's understand something. We have learned this very clearly that horoscope is prarabdha karma for this life. Sanchit karma is there, many collected karmas are there and a bunch of those collected karmas you are going to face in this life. That is your prarabdha for this life. Right? Destined karmas for this life and this is seen through birth horoscope. The karmas that you will go through in this life are already destined. Okay. But after you are born, up to this extent, you have committed many other karmas as well, which is called Kriya Man Karma. You have done some remedies, done multiple things. Now this is called Kriya Man Karma. Some of this Kriya Man Karma will go to your Sanchit Karma, which result you will have in next life, not the immediate next life, but next lives. And some result of it you will face in this life itself. Right? So Kriya Man Karma goes into two categories. It can be collected for future lives or the result will be felt in this life itself. If the result is felt in this life, it is not felt immediately. It can be felt immediately or after some time, whatever be the case. Right? That's the first thing. Now, because the horoscope is based on the birth time, this talks about Sanchit Karma only. Sorry, this talks about Prarabdha Karma only. The Prashna chart talks about Kriya Man Karma. Right, the karmas that you have done in these lives. So traditionally, it is recommended if a native is asking a prashna, if it is a horary question, you will make a horary chart, you will make a prashna chart that is there. But traditionally, it is recommended that in every consultation, a prashna chart should be made. A prashna chart should be made because prashna chart gives you a glimpse of kriya mana karma. Suppose someone is inquiring about marriage. And the marriage is bad in natal horoscope. That means as per Prarabdha Karma, marriage is bad. Now you make Prashna and Prashna indicates marital life is good. That means because of Kriyamana Karma, because of things committed in this life, the person is enjoying good result of marriage. 
Now the question is for how long he will keep on enjoying it because it cannot be forever. Prashna is not applicable forever. Eventually the Prarabdha Karma will take over. But for how long the Kriyaman Karma will be there, this have to be timed. Second thing is if the natal horoscope also indicates bad marriage, Prashna chart also indicates bad marriage, Prarabdha Karma is also bad, Kriyaman Karma is also bad, resulting in bad marriage that is there. Now if the person starts doing remedy for marriage, in how much time the result of this Kriyaman Karma will come and marital life can improve. Marital life will be better. These two questions will be there. Right. So the first tip that is there is for every, every time you read a horoscope, as you sit to see the horoscope, you will also make a Prashna chat. You will analyze the prospects of the same thing, whatever is the question, marriage, profession, childbirth, whatever, from the natal chart and from the Prashna chart. In case of a confusion between natal chart and Prashna chart, the result of Prashna chart will prevail as it is Kriyaman Karma, but the result of Prashna chart is not permanent, it is temporary. Now the point is how long, temporary for how long? Some people have came with this concept that Prashna chart is applicable for one year only. Right. Now, if you go to the timing of planet, which we have, which I have discussed about in planets in your birth chart series recently completed. There it is told that if Saturn is indicating a result, Saturn will give that result after one year. Saturn indicates one year. If Prashna chart is applicable for an year only and Saturn is indicating the time of one year, so result will happen after one year, not told immediately after one year, like on the 367th uh, day, the result will be applicable. That is not the case. Any time after one year, it will be there. So Prashna chart, if it is limited to one year only, how this result of Saturn can work? That's point number one. If you go very technical with the analysis of Prashna principles, it will go like Saturn indicates one year. Now, if this Saturn goes to the third Navamsh, because Saturn have gone to three Navamsh, the year should be multiplied by three results will happen in three years. Now, because Prashna itself indicates the result is going to happen in three years, what happens to the concept of Prashna is applicable for one year only? So there is no authentic reference to the point that Prashna is applicable for one year only. Prashna can be applicable for n number of years. That depends on the setup of the Prashna chart. It can be applicable for one year. It can be applicable for one day also. Right? For how long it is applicable, it is indicated in the Prashna chart as longevity is indicated in birth chart. Right? Longevity of the birth chart is the validity of the birth chart. In the same manner, longevity of the Prashna chart is the validity of the Prashna chart as well. This you have to understand and just by in explaining this process, I have spilled out a secret that there is a longevity of Prashna chart as well. And so intelligent people will take cue from it. Students who know how I calculate longevity will quickly get a cue out of it. They will understand something that is not the purpose of the video, but you see, I have just told you. Many such things are there in courses when I teach for two, two and a half hours. Many such things slips out of my mouth and and the students who are discerning and who have read, you know, who have read my articles, seen my videos, joined my other courses and learned it with dedication, get multiple secrets out of it. Right. So the course is a gold mine. Any course that I am doing is a gold mine. And these are not my words. These are the words of students who are currently enrolled, formally enrolled and all of the students. Right. So my point is the point that I was telling you that Vimshotri Dasha calculated from the nakshatra of moon occupied at the time of query indicates how the result of Kriyaman Karma and how the result of Prarabdha Karma interferes with each other. Because see, natal chart is indicating bad marriage, Prashna chart is indicating good marriage. Of course, Prashna chart will prevail because it is Kriyaman Karma and the marital life will be good. But because this good is not permanent, you cannot say it is completely good. It is temporarily good only. Right. If this good of Prashna chart tells you that your wife will behave very well with you or your husband will behave very good with you in a very good, very friendly manner with you, it is temporary. It is not permanent. So a, a person who is permanently a good person is a different type of good as compared to a person who is temporarily a good person or just for the time being in a good mood. Right. So the difference is there. 
because the result that is being faced is temporary. So how do you find for how long this result will be there? For that, you should calculate Vimishatri Dasha from the nakshatra occupied by moon at the time of Prashna. And one mistake what people will do that if the Prashna is asked in 2024, moon is going into Vishaka nakshatra, they start calculating the Dasha from 2024 itself. That should not be the case. The Dasha should be calculated from the birth time of the person. Right. And because the Prashna is asked in 2024, Dasha from 2024 onwards should be seen. So the moon nakshatra will be taken from 2024 for, from the time of Prashna, but Dasha will be calculated from the birth time of the native and the current Dasha will be seen and based on the analysis of Dasha Antar Dasha, which will be good because Prashna is indicating good result. One will have to find out for how long this good result is sustaining for how long this good result is there. And by finding this, one should say for how long this good result will be in the life of the native. This is how the prediction is to be made. One thing. Secondarily, the second opinion is that Vimshotri Dasha. You see, I told you in the starting that Vimshotri Dasha is considered very important because maximum human longevity in Kali Yuga is 120 years and Vimshotri Dasha is also 120 years. By saying this, we understand that there is some correlation between the longevity of the person and Vimshotri Dasha. Okay. Longevity of the person and Vimshotri Dasha, there is some correlation. That means to say, if you have to predict longevity of a person, then Vimshotri Dasha is a very good tool. This is a generally accepted formula that the principles related to longevity apply very best when you apply Vimshotri Dasha. The, all the principles related to longevity are made based on Vimshotri Dasha only. So when we are using other dasha, a suitable modification is needed. That is one point. Let's leave it. But how to predict longevity with respect to Vimshotri dasha regarding that? There's a principle. That one should calculate Vimshotri dasha from the fifth star, fifth nakshatra occupied by the nakshatra of moon that is called Utpanna nakshatra. And one should also calculate from the eighth nakshatra from moon, eighth nakshatra from the nakshatra which is occupied by moon, this is called Adhana nakshatra. And one should also calculate Vimshotri Dasha from the fourth nakshatra, from the nakshatra occupied by moon, and this is called Adhan Chem nakshatra. Right? So one should calculate Vimshotri Dasha from Utpanna Nakshatra, Adhan Nakshatra and Shema Nakshatra, all these three Nakshatra. What is the purpose? There is something known as Dasha Sandhika. When one Mahadasha is changing to another Mahadasha, two years are the Dasha Sandhika, right? One year for the ending Dasha and one year for the starting Dasha. Now from these three Dasha, Utpanna Dasha, Adhan Dasha and Shema Dasha, if the Dasha Sandhi period from any of the two Dashas are coinciding with each other, that means in this three formula of Adhan, Utpan and Shem Vimshotri Dashas, if two Dashas or from the two set of Dashas or three set of Dashas, if Dashas are ending together or starting together, it makes something such as Gandhan. This is Dasha Gandhan, right? From two Dasha systems from two variations of Vimshotri, Dasha is ending at the same point of time and this is very much fatal for health. Right? So take an example. For example, take this uh, horoscope. Now Vimshotri, very simple it is. Vimshotri Dasha, you go to options, starting point, you do it at Utpanna Tara, fifth star. You get Utpanna Vimshotri Dasha. You see when the Dashas are ending. Right? You say you can take a screenshot of it. Let's take a screenshot of it. This is from Utpanna Nakshatra and we go to the next one, Chematara Dasha also we take.
दिस इज उत्पन्न तारा एंड दिस इज द छेम दशा एंड लास्टली वी आल्सो टेक इट फ्रॉम आधान तारा Right. You can just go select Adan Tara eighth star, Shem Tara fourth star, Utpan Tara fifth star, and so on. Now comparing between Shem Dasha and Adhan Dasha. See Venus Maha Dasha is ending in eighteen eighty, not matching with any of the Shem Tara. Sun is ending in eighteen eighty six. Moon is ending in eighteen ninety six. Now you see Moon Dasha is ending in eighteen ninety six in this Adhan Tara. You check my mouse here. Moon Dasha is ending in eighteen ninety six February in Adhan Tara, and in Shem Tara in eighteen ninety five Saturn Dasha is ending eighteen ninety five November. It is ending. It will the Dasha Sandhi period is for two years, one year before and one year after. So because from Shem Tara, Saturn Maha Dasha is ending in eighteen ninety five November. Result will remain up to eighteen ninety six November. And before that, in 1896 February itself, Moon Dasha from Adhan Tara will also be ending. This is creating the thing that Vimshottri from Adhan Tara of Moon and Vimshottri from Chem Tara of Saturn is ending together within one year of each other. This point of time. The period from eighteen ninety five to eighteen ninety six for this native should be very problematic for health. This is how it is applied. Now you see from this, now you see from this Utpan Tara in eighteen ninety six. April, Mercury the Shah is also ending. So this eighteen ninety six period, eighteen ninety five, eighteen ninety six period, because from Chem the Shah eighteen ninety five November Saturn the Shah is changing. It will go up to eighteen ninety six November, and in eighteen ninety six February Vimshottri the Shah from Adhana Nakshatra Moon the Shah will change, and Vimshottri the Shah from Utpan Nakshatra Mercury the Shah will also change. So this time eighteen ninety six. Five to eighteen ninety six, November to November is the period when we measure three the shafram Adhana Tara, Chema Tara, and Utpan Tara. All three of them are ending together. This one year should be very problematic for the health of this native. Right, this way it have to be applied. So out of the eight variations, I have talked about four variations, and I have clearly told you that Chema Utpan and Adhana Tara and we measure three the shafs. should be used only for comparative purpose and that comparative purpose is to find if any two or all three or if any two or three dashas from this two or three variations are ending within one year if yes then it creates health problems this is one uses i have told you of course these have different uses as well which i will be teaching in the course right One more variation I told you that that counting Vimshottri Dasha from the nakshatra occupied by the moon at the time of Prashna should be benefitingly used to analyze for how long the result of Kriya Mana Karma will remain activated in the life of native, right? So in such way, with clear demarcation principles will be taught in the course. More than eight variations of Vimshottri Dasha. when to use it how to use it what is the purpose will be taught in the course which makes this course a very brilliant course in timing of events through vimshottri dasha right and variation vimshottri dasha and its variations not only that regarding horoscope analysis also the principles of like you see i always say it i have told it in many of the earlier classes as well that astrology like computer language you know when we were in school we understood that computer un understands binary language 0 1 0 1 it understands good bad only it understands so in the same manner the result is told by astrologer astrology only understand few languages right karak marak shubh paap only these things astrology understands nothing more than that the astrologer have to interpret the result accordingly raj yoga dur yoga 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 bang 
only these words are understood by astrology only these things are given by astrology the interpretation of it is the work of the astrologer right that is something that you very clearly understand first now in rajyog duryog analysis karak marak analysis nothing beats lagu parashri the principles of lagu parashri are clear the principles of lagu parashri is precise you know we listen to the legends of great astrologers who have predicted things with great confidence that i am telling you this will happen in this dasha with 100% confidence and that happened and any astrologer who is doing this is using lagu parashri only there is no two thoughts about it any legendary astrologer 98% they are backing on lagu parashri either knowingly or unknowingly you can say it without any doubt right so that lagu parashri we are going to cover and karak marak analysis rajyog duryog analysis good dasha period bad dasha period analysis will be at your fingertips quickly in 1 minute you can look at the shantar dasha and you can say this is rajyog dasha antar dasha whatever the person will do he will be successful he wants to get married he will get married he want to have child he will have child for sure pakka 100% right or you can say this is a bad time bad results will happen in one minute you can say horoscope reading you can do in 15 minutes very easy simple principles are there and these are the principles which never fails i can say you confidently that any astrologer who is making correct predictions if the astrologer is making more than 95% correct predictions they are using the principles of lagu parashri and madhya parashri only nothing else right and you see dphs the text have a lot of opinion in the text which opinion is original opinion of parashar is difficult to be find that's why these two books no lagu parashri and madhya parashri they bear the name of parashar so when you combine these two books together you get all the principles which parashar have made and which parashar have contributed to the world of astrology and these principles are so astonishing these principles are so great these principles are so accurate that nowadays the world traditional astrology vedic astrology and parashari astrology is almost synonymous with each other so really understanding parashar the parashar system of astrology or the type of astrology parashar rishi practiced in his cave you have to understand lagu parashari and madhya parashari and this is what exactly we are going to do in this course right many people don't understand the simple formula that if mahadasha lord and antardasha lord are connected with each other they will never produce bad results even if they produce bad results those bad results are manageable on the other hand if dasha lord and antardasha lord are not connected to each other in that particular scenario even though the dasha lord and antardasha lord are beneficial planets good planets they are not going to produce 100% good results some bad results they will produce for sure but until and unless you know these principles you will see mahadasha is of a good planet antardasha is of good planet you don't know that if they are not connected they will not produce 100% good result you will predict everything good but that will not happen bad results will also happen resulting in a wrong prediction so principles of lagu parashari and madhya parashari are very important to be understood because without these principles prediction of dasha cannot be imagined should not be done and if anyone is doing they cannot achieve 90% accuracy at all i am not saying it this is a scholarly accepted opinion 100% and the speciality about course is that it covers important divisional charts in depth also madhya parashari tells you that if a planet is situated in a navamsh of a rashi a rashi which happens to be in 9th house of d1 chart or if a planet happens to be in a rashi who is lorded by the planet who lords the 9th house of the rashi chart also the dasha antar dasha of that planet is going to be very good rajyog producing so what is told in this principle the users of navamsh is also told now i cannot just sit silent in the course after teaching this principle i will teach you more principles on navamsh also so an in depth essential understanding of d9 d3 and d12 is all, will also be provided in the course so important principles related to the uses of d9 d12 and d3 
in predictions of horoscope the principles from madhya prashari and from my experience right because if i am teaching as a teacher in the course i will have to add things from my experience that too i will be teaching in the course right so accurate predictions from dasha and accurate analysis of horoscope if you want to do you will have to join this course looking forward for